Almost everything you find has a computer chip in it that's not purely mechanical. Your LEDs, your stoplights, even something like a roller coaster is covered in computer chips to control the brakes. The funnest part of embed engineering is usually you're making a computer do something that you can see in the real world. Motors are turning, lights are turning on, water is being pumped from one reservoir to another. To me, that's always more satisfying than just seeing pixels change on a screen. Hi, I'm Jacob Rigby. I'm a design engineer here at Feria Labs, and I work on a little bit of everything from hardware all the way up through to the cloud. So I'm Kevin Banks. I'm chief technology officer at a company called Feria, Feria Labs. I work on projects for a variety of customers. Sometimes it's a medical device, sometimes it's a solar field application, sometimes it's concert lighting. On the Feria Lab side, that's an educational technology company, and so I'm part of the team making the CodeSpace product line, which includes CodeBot and Codex. The coolest embedded project I've worked on was actually the upgrade of the Feria Labs CodeBot and Codexes. So during the parts shortage with COVID, we couldn't get all the parts we needed to make more CodeBots and Codexes. So I was called in to help out and upgrade them with new parts. And it was actually really cool working on a existing project and needing to fit in new pieces. As an embedded engineer, my main responsibilities are gathering the requirements for a project, coming up with a design that will meet those requirements, deciding what to buy versus what to make, then creating the software that has to be made, and then testing and integrating that software. The most surprising thing for me was how I was able to start working on hardware projects when I come from a software background and how quickly I was able to pick it up. It was surprising how much fun it was to work on both sides of the aisle. Miniaturization is great. You know, I love all the computing power that I have on my wrist now, but to uh, get a scope probe or a voltmeter and try to actually poke around on the circuit, you're having to work under a microscope in a lot of cases. So those are challenges that are unique to embedded. Soft skills are way more important than you might think. You need to be able to communicate clearly with people who have no idea what's going on on the engineering side. People that know what they need, but they don't know how to tell you what they need. These days, it's very rare to be on a project that's completely one person. You're usually gonna be part of a team and you're having to coordinate with others to plan who's gonna do what and how it's all gonna fit together in the end. If you're considering a career in embedded engineering, I would encourage you to go ahead and kind of take it for a test drive way before you ever get to high school or college. First, see if you like programming at all because embedded programming is still a type of programming. So uh, try a language like Python or JavaScript. If that is something that you enjoy, then look into hardware just a little bit. Look at things like the Arduino platforms, or the Raspberry Pi devices, or the Fury Labs projects. See if LEDs and motors and switches and buttons and displays are something that's interesting to you. So <laughs> if you're an embedded engineer, you've got the whole breadth of the world to work on.